Live from Utah's first TV station, ABC4 News celebrates 75 years. Good evening, I'm Glenn Mills. And I'm Emily Flores. We thank you for joining us here today. We do begin with the storms across the Wasatch Front. Here's a quick look at some video out of Eagle Mountain where you see right there that is actually hail coming down and we aren't done just yet. There are more mm. storms across the Wasatch Front tonight. Yeah, let's go ahead and check in with Chief Meteorologist Alana Brophy for the latest on conditions. Alana. Both storms tracking north and putting down some heavy rain downpour coming down in Tooele, where Tooele County has stayed active. Take a look at this video and you're able to see the winds moving the trees, but look at all that rain. Also an abundance of lightning. That's what we're seeing with these storms as they develop and continue to track north. Let's take a look at exactly where they are so you know what you're facing as we get through the rest of the evening. Now, because these are packing a punch, we have to be extremely careful with the latest storm over towards Box Elder County. We're going to zoom in here and giving you an idea of what we're facing. This is towards Rosette, where we're getting 55 mile per hour winds and nickel sized hail. So we know that these storms are capable of bringing in hail. Also the case near Cache Valley as we get a little closer up there towards Smithfield, getting some lightning right near the state line. But along the Wasatch Front, we've seen these active conditions, including in Tooele County. Look at all that lightning here in the last hour. Storms over the lake pushing north that will bring impacts once they move over land and then into the western side of Salt Lake and Davis County active conditions hold on. We've got cloud cover out there, gusty winds and on top of that we're seeing this lightning so it's not super safe to be out there. Eagle Mountain not a surprise that it's hailing right now and as we get a little closer you're able to see towards Utah Lake near Gorder we definitely have a stronger cell. Now as these storms move over the water they can hold together and even get enhanced which means we've got a lot going on. Woodland Hills, Payson, also storms overhead there. So just as we take a look, you're able to see that we have a lot going on. Now, the SPC put out a marginal risk for storms in the northwestern and western side of the state. That means the gustier winds are expected and severe storms are possible, and we are seeing right there on the line for some of these cells coming through. Now, we also know that that marginal risk is going to hold into tomorrow. These storms putting down plenty of rain on top of that are rivers prompting flood alerts, which you see we've got flood warnings, flood watches and flood advisories in effect right now. Now we have active skies to add to the mix. How long these skies stick around when it comes to activity and thunderstorms coming up in my full forecast. Glenn, Emily, over to you. All right, Lana, thank you. And in Utah County this hour, where Lehigh Elementary School's parking lot has turned into a pond. You see it here. Yeah, look at that. The school sitting next to uh, Dry Creek, which also flooded four years ago, you may remember. City leaders say with the amount of snow melt and debris in the water, the creek's water levels, well, they're changing daily. They're warning people to just stay away from the creek and any flooded areas, including the nearby Dry Creek Park that is now closed, by the way, due to flooding. We do have a crew in Lehigh working on a live update for us tonight at 6. The snow melt also impacting roads in Payson Canyon. Yes, destroying the road on the Nebo Scenic Loop and closing it to traffic at this point. Now, this area is part of the Uinta Wasatch Cache National Forest area. This section usually has a target opening date of Memorial Day weekend, depending on the weather, of course. Well, the record snowpack and runoff has caused significant damage to the canyon road in several spots. With runoff still taking place, the Forest Service isn't sure when they'll be able to make the needed repairs. On Nebo alone, we've got five spots right now that we're either uh, we've had undercutting or we have um, just water flowing over the roads that have damaged the roads and other canyons. We've got several other sites, just a lot of water flow and undercutting and road damage. OK, the Forest Service is teaming up with the Utah County Public Works Department for road repairs, and they will start working on sections of the road that they can access in the next week or two. Areas that still have water running over the roadway will have to wait until the water subsides. All right, turning out to Spanish Fork, where police say a toddler was hit by a stray bullet while at daycare. An unbelievable story. ABC 4's Annika Johns joining us live in Spanish Fork with the latest Annika. As of right now, information is limited as Spanish Fork police continue their investigation. However, what is known is that a a young boy taking a bullet to the head and surviving is nothing short of a miracle. Two adults were with the young children at daycare when they noticed that the two year old was stumbling and bleeding from the face. In response, they called the child's parents who then took him to the hospital where a small caliber bullet was found lodged in his head. Upon the discovery, the child was transferred to the primary children's hospital. 
Police are still investigating where the bullet came from, and their current theory is that someone fired a gun in the field directly west of the daycare. Right now, officers say that they don't know, they, they don't think this person intentionally shot the boy or fired at the daycare. Everything as far as information we're gathering is that this was clearly an accident by someone that would have had to have been in the area, either target shooting or somehow fired around. Since the bullet is still in the child's head, police aren't able to accurately identify what it is. However, they do believe that it is a 22 caliber bullet that was shot from an air rifle. Reporting live in Spanish Fork, Annika Johns, ABC4 News. Thank you, Annika. In local politics, the Utah mayor wants to replace Senator Mitt Romney. Today, Riverton Mayor Trent Staggs announcing he will be running for Romney's U.S. Senate seat in the 2024 election. In his video announcement posted to Twitter, he touted himself as a proven fighter and someone unafraid to stand against the Washington establishment. Now, he says some of his priorities include immigration, national debt, and the money we're sending to help Ukraine in the war against Russia. Jason Perry, the director of the Hinckley Institute of Politics, says Staggs will need to do two major things in his campaign. He's going to have to raise a lot of money and he's going to have to use all of it to increase his name ID and to set himself apart, particularly since he does not have a record to run on yet. Utah House Speaker Brad Wilson also considering a run for Romney Senate seat. Perry says how this election plays out really sways on whether or not Romney decides to run again. We reached out to his office today about the announcement, but he declined to comment. And lockout has been lifted for several schools in Kearns after a gun scare at Kearns High School. Police still looking for the gun while two suspects are in custody. They say some students and an unknown man were verbally fighting at the high school when a student wo uh, waved a gun. UPD is saying that everyone ran when they arrived. They say they have two suspects in custody now, but they're still looking for that gun. The high school, South Kearns Elementary and Beehive Elementary School were placed on lockout. While the spring runoff isn't just impacting rivers and flooding, it also means more mosquitoes. Oh boy, okay, ABC4's Northern Utah correspondent Kate Garner reporting from Davis County this afternoon with just how bad this mosquito season could look this year, Kate. If you're going to be spending any time outside, it's a good idea to take mosquito repellent with you. Officials say this summer, the mosquito season is going to be longer and busier than usual. We bought this thing to kill the mosquitoes. Look at this. Syracuse resident Bianca Hewish says this is the aftermath of running their bug zapper for just one night. My husband's like, well, you're used to, like, you're from Brazil, but, like, I have never seen that many mosquitoes ever in my life. Like, it was insane. There are other bugs in the mix. My one-year-old has mosquito bites everywhere on his face. It's kind of sad. But there are still way too many mosquitoes for comfort. It was a very long winter and my kids were so excited for being outside and play, but they they kind of just hang out inside because they don't want to get mosquito bites. According to the Davis Mosquito Abatement District, it's floodwater mosquito season. And they're good strong flyers, so they're moving up into the subdivisions and up into the parks and causing a lot of problems. Gary Hatch says unlike some mosquitoes, this type bites all day long. And thanks to all the runoff, they're out in full force. We've already treated 35,000 acres in May, and we haven't sprayed this week yet. To put that into perspective, Hatch says on an average year, the district will use a plane to treat about 10,000 acres before Memorial Day. We will be out uh, every night this week trying to get uh, as much neighborhood covered as we possibly can. He says they're working to stay on top of the issue. But if your neighborhood is being hit particularly hard, you can also reach out to the local abatement district and request an additional spray. That would be awesome. So we can enjoy summer like in our backyard. To learn which mosquito abatement district you live in or how to request that they come out and spray in your neighborhood, visit our website at abc4.com. Reporting from Davis County, Cade Garner, ABC4 News. Still ahead, fewer paramedics on the job. Why Utah firefighters are seeing a challenging paramedic, uh, paramedic turnover rate in behind the badge. And this was the view of Salt Lake City this evening. Angie Hunter catching that photo. Live view from Cache Valley where we've got storms on the move. Strong storms impacting the central portion of the Wasatch Front. What you need to know and how long the storms stick around coming up in Utah's most accurate forecast.